All right, Grayson Grunhaber, sick of 365. Recruiting analyst, co-host with the Bearcats and Craig Smoke on Tuesday, released up on the site and also through social media. All right, Grayson, let's start with last night's basketball game. I want to get into the decommitment from earlier this week and a couple other things, but um, that was not good. In any way, it didn't kill them because they have a game again next week at some point, but your thoughts about how that could affect their seed and just how that game went down. Yeah, I mean, obviously the game was not ideal. Um, when you think about kind of how Baylor played and the ebbs and flows of the game, it, it was really tough to watch because it, it felt like Oklahoma just on that night, they were just the better team. You know, they made shots. They It felt like they were a little more physical than Baylor uh, throughout the game. Uh, I wouldn't say they played harder. You know, Baylor did a pretty nice job in the turnover department. They played hard, but it just felt like they weren't quite as physical. And I, I think some of it was just, you know, potentially fatigue. I think some of it might have been um, just looking ahead to the postseason. I think all of those things could have came into play, and I I think you saw it. And, you know, the toughest part is the seeding, right? And um, they kind of got a little bit of a blessing by Auburn losing today, but they're probably going to need a little bit more help if they want to stay on that one line. I I think it's going to be really, really close. Um, And obviously kind of that dream scenario of getting the South region uh, as a one seed uh, might be fading. Because uh, if Arizona wins the Pac-12 tournament, they're probably going to be put in that bracket. And then Baylor's only chance of being in that bracket would be uh, being a two-seed. Um, so we'll see kind of how that plays out. Uh, but what I do know is Baylor still is in a good position to make a run in the tournament. And now they get some time, right? Time to get more healthy, time to kind of focus and prepare for what is the most important stretch of the season. Grayson, what uh, we had this discussion earlier. What concerns you more? Three of 22 – for Baylor or 11 threes for Oklahoma? Oh, I mean, it's for sure the three of 22 for Baylor. And the reason why I say that is because it's been a, it's been something that I thought was a problem ever since they lost LJ Cryer. If they go cold from three, which is much more likely when you have, you know, far less three point shooting without LJ Cryer there to space the floor. um, It's a concern, right? Because if they don't get Cryer back, uh, by the time the tournament starts, I, they could easily have a game where they don't shoot the ball well, um, and that could cause a big problem. I mean, we saw it. They lost to Oklahoma, and Oklahoma's a solid team, but they're not better than a team that Baylor's probably going to face in the second round if they're a two-seed, or they're probably on par with an 8-9 if Baylor gets a one-seed. So, um, yeah, they, they could easily get upset if they continue to shoot like that without LJ there. Grayson, what did you think of uh, the idea? And I saw this from a lot of different Baylor faithful last night after the game of, oh, that's all right. They they get more time to rest now. Or even if they're a number two seed, that's a little extra rest. And and I understand the logic from the standpoint of they are a beat-up team. But uh, your thoughts on, I know some of that's coping with a loss, but do you think there's actually anything to that in your mind? Yeah, I mean, I think there's got to be something to that right now. Had they won that game, and then lost today, would there be a big difference? No. Now, if they had won the entire Big 12 tournament, yeah, that would have taken a big toll on their body, and maybe that wouldn't have been a good thing. Uh, But to say, you know, one extra day, I don't know that it matters that much. But, yeah, I mean, if they'd gone all the way to the Big 12 championship game, uh, then, yeah, it could have definitely been a problem by the time they got to the tournament. All right, so they they had a decommitment this week, a, a highly ranked safety, and I, I did read some of what you said, that the, the Texas and Oklahoma factor is very much heavily involved. How much of a, a hit is that? And, and what does that mean they can do without now him being a part of that list? Yeah, so it's a big loss in my opinion. He was my highest ranked safety prospect that they had in the class, uh, a four-star guy. And obviously the offers have finally started to catch up to that. He got the Oklahoma offer last week. Um, Texas has been in play for him. Arkansas. Uh, I think he got an old Miss offer actually right after he decommitted as well. So, uh, yeah, I mean, he's a really good player. He's going to be a tough one to um, replace. But what I would say is it allows Baylor to get a little more creative. Um, they took three safety commits really early. Uh, JV on Wilcox, Corey Huff, and Tyler Turner. Uh, Turner is the one who decommitted. And so I think this allows them to maybe spend that spot on a cornerback uh, instead. And honestly, that's a position they really need to address more than safety even. So 
Um, I think that's kind of where you'll see that make up the difference. I don't think the, the staff is too worried about it. I don't think that this is a, you know, massive loss that's going to ruin the class or anything like that. But I do think he's a very quality player and a quality individual. And so now, you know, Baylor's got to figure out a way to replace him uh, in the class culturally and then also just athletically in the safety spot. Does it seem like the chances of a reunion are pretty slim? Because you know how it is when guys decommit. I mean, sometimes they come and revisit the school they were committed to, but that's that's kind of the exception to the rule. Yeah, it's kind of rare. And, you know, he committed when Matthew Pallage was the safety coach at Baylor. And that's he right. obviously visited, um, you know, he visited, you know, even after he left and still really likes Baylor. And, and I, I do think that he will give Baylor a fair shot if Baylor really, really wants him. But I actually think, you know, under Dave Aranda, I mean, we saw last year when Cedric Roberts decommitted, you know, they weren't in the business of trying to take him back. I think this is one of those situations where Baylor wants guys who 100% want to be at Baylor. And so if you waver, if you decide to go elsewhere, well, then, you know, Baylor's going to go try to fill your spot. And if your spot gets taken before, um, you know, you make a decision, then so be it. So um, I do think it's probably wise to, to think of this as he's going to go somewhere else um, but I do think Tyler will give them a shot potentially take a visit um, but I do know he wants to take his official visits out of state he wants to go see different places that he wouldn't normally be able to see final thing for you uh, we've made a lot of or we've had a lot of talk uh, over the last few months about what a loaded Central Texas uh, recruiting class there is uh, for this year and, and the year after. Uh, but Trey Wisner from Connolly dropped uh, his you know top list of schools, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, Oregon, Texas, A&M, Arkansas, Florida State, USC. Obviously, no Baylor there. Um, you know, just talk about Trey Wisner because we watched him a couple years ago. He's a fantastic player, and obviously he's playing here in Waco. Uh, but in terms of not having Baylor on his list, did that surprise you at all? And how much of a loss, if you would even call it that, you know, how did he fit into the recruiting picture in your mind? Yeah, so I actually wouldn't call him that big of a loss. Okay. Uh, he was not their number one running back. Um, based on kind of what I've seen and kind of the trend, it, it really seems like, you know, there's a couple guys that they valued a little bit more than him. Um, and I also would say, you know, a part of that is, hey, he's a, he's a big-time recruit. Maybe we'll look elsewhere and try to land someone who maybe isn't getting as much attention. Now, the flip side of that is Baylor's about to have a running back from Florida take an official visit in June who is actually you know, a top 100 guy in the entire country, a guy with a ton of offers, and that's Trey on Webb out of Trinity Christian down there in Florida. So he's taking an official visit. I know one of their other big-time uh, running back prospects, Amarian Peterson out of Hershey, uh, he just got the Alabama offer this week. He's been a guy that Baylor's really, really wanted. And then Marquise Collins out of College Station is another guy who carried his team all the way to a state championship appearance. So they have a lot of options at running back. And to be honest, with the system and the scheme that they run uh, at Baylor, I, I think they can find a running back that will be equal or better than Trey. And I think based on how they've been recruiting the position, I, I just don't think that it's that significant of a loss for them. Grayson, thank you, man. Appreciate your time. Grayson with the inside knowledge. Grayson Grunhafer, Sikkim 365 recruiting analyst, co-host of the Bearcast. Yeah, I saw where USC uh, went and dropped an offer on Darian Gallette, and I think they had another guy they offered uh, here recently uh, in Central Texas. So USC's been around here in the last few days, and then Oklahoma State offered Jelani McDonald over at Connolly. Um, so they've been around here. And then, yeah, you got Trey Wisner with a pretty uh, – pretty uh, blue blood heavy uh, type of, of final list of schools. So, yeah, it's a it's a big class. Doesn't mean they're all going to go to Baylor, obviously, but it's going to be cool to kind of track where all these guys go because this is not just, you know, Big 12 offers. This is a lot of national attention uh, being placed on the area this year. So it's pretty cool. All right. You know, we have that series.